introduce her to the artist called Chris Field. Oh yeah, she got that fat, fat, fat. Try and title Pauline. They call, they try if you try for it. And this one is non-stop boys, man. Ooh. Chris Field, welcome to the Fading Radio Show. Hey, hey. Pauline, thank you. Rush till I stop to ask for more Call a bluff and you may not make the door On the cusp, so gonna help me break the floor Can't hold this, I entwine with your hips Words to your friends still burning your lips Yes, Chris, welcome to the Fighting Radio Show, man I'm okay. hey. hand with your cart is And you all to your back Yeah, Chris, what's going on? You know, not much, you know I just, just here chilling I mean, thanks for having me It's great it's nice, Yeah, it's nice. so the artist is Chris Field The first time doing a track yeah, pretty much. Never recorded anything before this. So this was a really interesting, you know, experience to be first. Yeah. And for the first one, you really hit the home run, you know? I honestly appreciate that you yeah. think now. Like, the support been amazing. Well, the really first really time happy. I heard it, it was like, yeah, this is a big one. I honestly appreciate so, that a lot. Keep pushing. What's the inspiration behind the um, track? Well, um... Inspiration is an interesting word because really and truthfully, nothing inspired me to write it. It was just in the studio, a beat was made, and they were like, hey, you know, what do you think we'll go over this? And I said, this would be a good track to, you know, be kind of deep and be kind of poetic on. So gotcha. um, it was really and truthfully supposed to be like a comparison of um, how you might arrive at intimacy with another person. You know, like the first verse was about, what if y'all don't like each other very much, but y'all just appreciate that y'all look nice? And then the second verse was more like, what if. You know, y'all have a conversation and one thing leads to yeah. another. You know, so that was that was the inspiration behind it, pretty much. So, like, you wrote the song? Yeah, I did write the song. Um, Diggs, the producer, he pretty much, you know, he wrote the hook, he wrote the hook melody. Yeah. And he was like, put lyrics to this. And I was like, okay, cool. And then they wrote the verses and everything, but, you know, he had an instrumental hand and everything. And when things sounded bad, he was like, nah, that sound bad. Nah, that too long. Nah, fix it. Yeah, so, I, I would definitely say the producer did a good job because is really kicking. That is a heavy, heavy track. Right? No, in terms of Barbados and the politics behind the music, <laughs> right? Uh, what do you think is affecting the culture, the musical culture in Barbados? Um, I think, like, not even to get into the politics yet, I feel like a lot of it is that the bar for Bajan artists is a lot higher than the bar for international artists because yes, in Barbados, so you would find that somebody would release a song and we would not, you know, like, somebody would have a, a song cloud link and they would put it on a Facebook and yeah. you would never click it. You would scroll past it. And if anybody asks you, yo, you hear about that artist, you say, oh, he's a song club artist. You know, buddy. It's true. You know, and if, even if you do click it, just because the audio quality is not exactly where it should be necessarily because the person don't have the budget to throw around. We don't listen to the song. We will listen to the first 10 seconds and say, and nah, that's, I don't that's like this. It. You yeah. know, we should, we should judge the song on the song. We should judge the art on the art. You know, and I feel it. Like that's a big obstacle for artists to overcome. Indeed, indeed. Music is a music is an investment. So when you realize that you gotta pay a lot of money for a track and you don't think that you can get any traction because Bajans don't like music from Barbados, yeah. you you less likely to pay the money that it takes to produce a good a good quality thing. So I feel so like we gotta start at the grassroots. And we gotta at the grassroots. So what do you think it needs to to be done to start making the music industry in Barbados what it should be? Well, I guess I guess Bajans just gotta be more open to local music. Um, People uh, right, surrounding this track, I was getting a lot of support and people were saying, well, this shows that Bajans will support things as long as it's quality. But, you know, I feel like I've listened to songs on Vines in Barbados that yeah. sounded like, from Jamaica, that sounded like they were recorded on a Blackberry. And, you know, but, they've been big. They're still, they're still big. You know, Bajans yeah. still like them. So I feel like if we give the kind of chances to Bajan artists that we give to artists from Showcase abroad. Showcase the talent for real. Correct. Plus two, what you find is that, like, an artist would say, all right, I can put on a show with 10 other artists in Barbados and nobody would come. You know, and this is how artists make money. People don't make money on royalties anymore. People make money on shows. Definitely. You know, you need that money to invest back into making a better product. So I feel like yep. we just need to be more, you know, embracing of the culture. So in terms of the culture, who you say are the top musicians, the top artists in Barbados right now and the Caribbean that influence you into writing a song and painting a song? Um, from the... From Barbados? From Barbados um, and the Caribbean. You mean in terms of impact or you mean as in people that I just encountered? People that uh, let's say an icon or a model, somebody that you looked up to as a All right. a artist. I really like Taris Riley. Yeah. I really like uh, I really like Jack Hewer. Um, I really like Teff. Teff is another person that I think is is, is really really impactful. I like 
Kristen Walker. I think that her vibe is very, very unique yeah, and very, very nice. different. She's nice for real. Um, I like Rico Maserati as well. I think he's pretty chill. And I love what he's doing in terms of opening the eyes of Barbadians to hip hop culture in Barbados. That's true. Because they're amazing hip hop artists in Barbados. They're people like Kevin Diaz, the people like Sun Rock, the people like Ray Minister that have been around for a while. People like Ruby Tat that been around and plugging the culture. Long time. But people ain't been opening the door to them as much as maybe they should. You find that musicians flock to them. So musicians that appreciate music on a, on a deep level flock to them and they say, ah, these people are great. But the general populace has not really embraced hip hop as a culture until Rico Maserati, in my opinion. And they feel that what he's doing for the culture is great. Yeah, I think, I think what happens is, is that we embrace technology. He came into the age of technology. It helped a lot as well because, as you said, Ruby Tat, Sun Rock. Those guys were singing for for years now and they really get recognized. Mm -hmm. So I guess he, he, he really started a benchmark and get recognition for these local artists in Barbados. In my opinion. He, he right. came along at a really good time. Like rap is no deep. Um in the, in the kind of time when Sun Rock and those kind of guys would have been no popping and like no in their prime of yeah. rap. Not that they're not really hard known. Like rap was not really the dominant yeah. you know culture. So you would not find Caribbean. correct. You would not find every song with a rap verse on it. You will not find all of these rap songs on the top 100 charts. You will find them in the clubs, yes, but I don't think rap had permeated the culture, the musical culture in the Caribbean or in the wider world as much yet. So Rico came along at a, at a good time. And I think, like, like I said, in terms of opening the doors for other hip hop artists and like softening the palette of Bajan listeners, I really think he's doing a great job. So what's the plan for the song No Is Out and who do you looking to reach? Well, uh, my thing in music is I just want people to like it. You know what I mean? I just want people to like it, and I want people to like it enough to genuinely want to share it. Like, it's one thing to go on social media and be like, hey, share it with your friends, and you feel, like, obligated to do it, but I want you to like it enough that you genuinely feel like, hey, I should share this. Yeah. Um, so that's that's all I really want. Um, in terms of who I want to reach, I want to reach, you know, whoever the song can reach. Um, we've been pushing it on radio stations. We've been pushing it. You know, on social media, the, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, that's good, that's um, good for real. Yeah, I, I just want, like, this song is supposed to put my foot in the door and say, hey, I'm Chris Fields, I do stuff. You know, I'm here. Yeah. So, yeah, that's... Get your name out there. Pretty much. Being where you live in Barbados is normally so called the genre of <laughs> choice. Yeah. Why did you choose to do the genre of R&B? Um, because I, 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 I consider myself to have a very, very broad musical mm -hmm. palette. Yes. Um, I listen to a lot of stuff. I'm influenced by a lot of stuff. You know, I really, really like a lot of stuff. So, soca is a beautiful genre. Don't get me wrong. I would do soca, except that I believe that when people start to do soca, they get put in a box that is very, very difficult to escape. Look at people like Edwin Yearwood. Look at people like John King, who are extremely talented. You know, vocalists. Alison Haynes as well, extremely talented vocalists. You know, and should have gone yes. a lot further than they have. Not saying that they have not gone far, because they do travel all over the world and sell out shows, and I, I do think that that's great. However, I feel like you know they could have been. Do more. Yeah, I feel further. like I feel like more people should know them. Like, they should be able to walk down the street in Tokyo and be like, hey, you know, Crossfire, and they should be able to say yes. You know, we have all of their albums. They're amazing. You know what I mean? So. In terms of soca, soca is a wonderful genre, and like I, 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 I'm looking to get into songwriting for soca. But in terms of performing it, I feel like people trap you in a box that is very difficult to escape. Yeah, but having one of those voices, like let's say Marvin or the voice, I think you can actually throw your hand at soca for next year. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Probably I mean, sweet soca with the voice you have, right? Nice man, I appreciate that. I'll try to think. What we can look forward for Chris Steel in the near future? Well, Is there anything coming? <laughs> I don't want to give away too much, but um, look for some visuals for Falling for sure. Um, yeah. You're probably not going to hear anything much from mu musically for the rest of the year, unfortunately. But, you know, early on in the new year, like, look for us to, you know, look for us at Lava Lamp to be dropping, you know, some pretty big stuff. You know, oh, and, and for the rest of November, Lava Lamp artists are doing big things. Um, Shay is going to be dropping Jungle on Friday. Um, Alex Cage is going to be dropping... Uh, his tune basically a little bit later this month not exactly sure when I don't think I've seen a concrete date and uh, Shian's body is already out on iTunes for, for basically pre-download but you know look for big things in terms of like, y'all gonna be blown away by how that's released so you said you're a part of a band name? well it's, a, it's, it's more of a media group it's more a of a media group yeah called Avalanche Media Avalanche Media uh huh which is myself Diggs the producer Shian the artist um, Lexi the artist um, Shay the sorry well Shay is also a producer but Shay um, Javier Jean Claire and I believe Alex Cage is also a part of Blah Blah. So that's the media group that I'm part of. Yeah, so in terms of contacting Chris Field, bookings, 
to reach you, to follow you on your IG? Yeah, man, it's, it's pretty yeah. simple. Um, my IG is at I am Chris Fields. I A M K R I S F I E L D S. I am Chris Fields. And you can find links to all my other social media through that, pretty much. Okay, so you heard it here live on the exclusive one drop faded radio show. Chris right about now, I'm gonna let you introduce the song to Barbados and the whole public. This is the faded radio show right about now. Well, my name is Chris Fields. You listen to the Faded Radio Show on Exclusive One Drop. This is Falling.